All right. We're going to call this meeting to order at 7.02, open session. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for your, your presence. Um, we just convened from, we've just reconvened from closed session. No action was taken during closed session. So we'll move to our open session, um, item 4A, four, four and we'll start with the flag salute. If everyone will please rise, the flag is back there. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Um, next, we'll move to roll call. My pin. We have Adrian Greer. Here. Yolanda Rodriguez-Pena. Present. Gabriela Arianes. Present. Jerry Bibles Vogel. Here. And I'm here, so everyone's here. So move on to item C, approval of the agenda, 4.1. Make a motion to approve. Second. There's a motion by Yolanda Rodriguez-Pena, seconded by Adrian Greer. Any discussion? <coughs> okay, seeing none, please place your vote. I just logged in. Log out again. Okay. Did you hit join meeting? Mm -hmm. oh. I did. Now. I think that's not going to work. Hold on. Yes. We'll just say yes, and then during the presentation, we can. You guys, can, let's just take a hand vote. Adrian. Uh, hit yes. Yolanda. Yes. Gabriela. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Motion passes five zero. We'll move on to item five point one: spotlight on adult education and Sierra High School. Good evening. There we go. Welcome to the Adult Education Center and? Sierra High School, also formerly known as Sierra High School. <laughs> <laughs> Together we are the Alternative Education Center here in Azusa. And um, I'm going to start with a, pre a short presentation about the programs that we offer at the Adult Education Center. If my students could come forward, please. Joining me tonight are four of our students from our various programs. Um, and so they're here to share with you a little bit about themselves and the program that they're involved in and what their goals are. In adult education, we basically have three program areas. One is academics. And in the academics area, we have adult basic education for those folks that want to improve their reading and math and writing skills. We have our high school diploma program for those who wish to finish their high school diploma. And we have a high set preparation course where we offer uh, preparation activities for the high school equivalency exam. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I would like to introduce Joshua. And Joshua is a part of our academic program. He's going to share a little bit about himself. Hello, my name is Joshua. And I'm taking classes here at Azusa Adult School to get my high school diploma. Because of personal things that happened in my past, I was unable to graduate in high school. Learning for me has not been easy. Landing here at Azusa Adult, I have found so many different ways to learn. I have found that I can now do classes from home on the computer. Another thing is the way that the staff and teachers here motivate the students to learn and help and the help they give is just awesome. I tried to go to an adult school in Covina, and that school was just not for me. When I got here, I felt at home, and I found that I could learn. Being able to study at home and coming to night school has helped me in a big way because I am able to study at my own pace, and being able to check out books for the weekend has helped a lot. With all the help I have been getting from Azusa Adult, I'm confident I will be walking away with my high school diploma. Josh. The other program area for us is career technical education, 
And in that program area, we offer courses in two specific areas. One is business and computer technology. And at this point, in, and in those classes, we offer a basic computer literacy class for those people who don't know anything about computers, um, and an office technician class, as well as Word and Excel courses. Um, and I would like to introduce Esperanza right now for her to share a little bit about the program she's in. Um, good evening. I started my adult education in the ESL program as an adult um, student. And uh, I'm currently taking uh, technology classes based on computers. I'm taking Word. I'm taking Excel. I'm also taking classes uh, on Mondays, uh, Google application, Google Drive, Google Format. Um, they're opening many classes for computers, which are you know very helpful. And I thank you very much. Um, you know. I, I would like to, you know, after finishing these classes, um, you know, to improve my, my, improving my skills to be able to get a, a better opportunity for a job. Thank you. Thank you, Esperanza. In the career technical education field, we also offer uh, various pathway programs in medical in the medical field, including certified nurses assistant medical coding and billing, EKG technician, um, hospital ward clerk, and pharmacy technician. So next I'd like to introduce Nicholas, who's part of our pharmacy tech program. Hi, my name is Nicholas Ortega. I am a part of our pharmacy technician program. Uh, I decided to take this uh, class to fast track my education from being on an over two year wait list uh, for just to get into a pharmacy program. This, as you said, adult uh, has helped me so much. It's fast-tracked my entire pharmacy technician career so I can start at the age of 22 instead of starting at an age of like 24 to 23. Um, after I finish this pharmacy technician course, I plan on moving and getting into like a university or and even a grad school eventually so I can pursue a PharmD. And without Azusa, I couldn't have gotten this far. This is definitely a huge stepping stone in my career. Thank you, Nick. And then the last program area for us, for us is English as a Second Language. And we offer six levels of English as a Second Language. We also offer conversational English courses in the afternoon for those who want to improve their conversational skills um, and I'd like to introduce Beatrice to you now. Hi, my name is Beatrice. Um, I have been living here in Azusa for four months now. I'm learning English in the ESL program with Mrs. Piero. And I'm also attending medical terminology classes and the conversation class. Um, my career goals included losing the fear to speak English. I was so more shy than I am now. Um, there's oh, still so much you. that I um, to learn, especially pronunciation. But I'm getting better uh, every day with my, thanks to my teacher's patient and the ESL program. Um, the biggest goal in my career is to pass the NCLEX test to get my certificate as a nurse on our earn in the state of California. And together with the ESL program, the conversation class, and the medical term classes, um, it will improve my knowledge uh, by practicing in English what I already have, uh, what I have already learned in my mother language. In our English classes, we also learn <coughs> about civics, and that has had helped me a lot uh, with my resume. Now it looks more professional. And, we, uh, and the way I, I express myself in an interview, um, it has given me more confidence uh, because in the past, I wasn't able to even ask for shampoo at the store. And now I'm able to uh, establish a casual conversation or a professional one in the case of an interview. And I'm grateful for 
Thank you, Beatrice. Well, that is, in a nutshell, what we do here at the Adult Education Center. Um, I hope this helped you sort of understand a little bit and about our student stories. And we are just excited to be here to help our students fulfill their dreams. Mr. Hernandez, you're up next. Uh, Madam President, Madam Vice President, uh, Clerk, Board, Dr. Kaminsky and Cabinet and uh, distinguished guests. Uh, I'm very happy and pleased to present students from Sierra High School. Uh, we are not a typical uh, alternative ed or continuation school. What I love about our students is not only how dynamic they are, but just how demanding they are and they want the very best and they want the same. So things that we do different here. Uh, we have not one, not two, not three, we have four AP classes, some of which the students will talk about a little bit tonight. We have a dual enrollment college class. We offer the same exact English, math, science, history classes that are taught at the comprehensive schools. In nothing short, the students are flat out amazing, and I wouldn't trade a single one of them. So I am going to introduce at this time Mr. Anthony Guzman, who is going to talk briefly about his experiences here. <clears throat> at Sierra, I've gotten involved with multiple school-related activities that I probably wouldn't have at my original school. Because of the family-like environment, teachers have more time to spend with individual students and provide insight into their academic struggles. When I first arrived at Sierra, I didn't realize all the opportunities available. I participated in the LCAP, in the LCAP Student Committee, School Site Council, and Government Advanced Placement. Due to the teachers' student support at Sierra, I have improved in my academics. I now see college in my future and expect to excel. I did have the opportunity to return to my home high school, but decided Sierra was where I belonged. Next up, I would like to introduce Alessandro Macias, who was our lead student for the LCAP uh, student representatives here at Sierra. So greetings, school council. I'm Alessandro Macias, and I'm a proud student here in the Azusa Unified School District. I'm a proud Spartan here at here, uh, Sierra High School, and we're all about future goals and sports. Uh, honestly, one thing I'd like to get off is like without Sierra, I feel like I'll, I wouldn't be able to get the um, credits I sufficiently needed, and you know, we'll probably have to get GT and have to go through all that again. But now, I'm also, you know, an LCAP member, and one thing to focus on is how we can better the school community throughout the years, and yeah. Yeah. Our final student, uh, one that is here, is one of our first in a group, or hopefully a long line of groups, and she'll tell you more about that in a second, is Ms. Arlene Cruz Jimenez. Um, good evening. Um, I'm Arlene Cruz Jimenez. I'm a student here at Sierra High School. This school has provided me many chances and opportunities. Last year, I was here and I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be able to graduate and then I came here and they provided me an AP class which I'm really grateful because I really love drawing and I, I think later on in life that's, that's one of my focuses and I feel really happy because I the teachers helped me out a lot, and they basically made my talents grow even more. And Mrs. Strickland, she's one of the teachers that helped me out the most. She, she took me to museums to see more about art, and I was able to experiment many kinds of art, like oil pastel, um, water coloring, and I went to a lot of art shows too. And I was able to see different kind of artists because I didn't know many of those. And I passed this class 
with a three. And I feel really proud because, you know, not many students get that chance to pass an AP class. And so when I go to college, I'm gonna be able to get an advance because I already passed the course. And yeah, and I feel really, really inspirational to other people. I want other people to do the same thing I did. And that's yeah. it, thank you. Uh, as I said, incredibly dynamic uh, students. Um, they're just amazing. So thank you very much for this opportunity to present on behalf of Sierra High School. <laughs> I have a um, certificates for both of you. So come on down, ladies and gentlemen. And this is for the Azusa Unified School District. Certificate of Recognition is proud to present, is proudly presented to Sierra High School for promoting student achievement through rigorous instruction and community engagement. And that is for you. Congratulations. Have a hug. <laughs> and here we go. It pretty much says the Azusa Unified School District Certificate of Recognition proudly presented to Azusa Adult Education Center for promoting student achievement through rigorous instruction and community engagement. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and oh, we're all going to take a picture. All right. But, you want to bring up the students? Where'd they go? I, yeah. I see one. My, yeah. my, there's a couple of my students still here. Some had to go to class. Okay. <laughs> And I'd like to tell you, gentlemen, my, my son graduated from the, the like Sierra High School. Yeah, yeah, continuation. I, I was trying to think of the alternative high school. And he now makes $75,000 a year doing computers. So you guys have a future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we're moving on to item 5.2, and that's recognition of the, the LCAP, the Local Control Accountability Plan, Student Advisory Committee. Okay, I'm going to ask all of our members to come up and just stand behind me right now. While they're coming up, I'll start. Uh, President uh, Cruz Gonzalez, board members, Dr. Kaminsky, cabinet. Uh, I'm just super excited, honored to be here this evening to introduce you to an amazing group of young men and women, and they make up our LCAP Student Advisory Committee. And just a little background, um, uh, the LCAP, the Local Control and Accountability Plan, is a document that we are required by law to do, and it's a three-year document, and every year we update it. And part of the requirement for developing a district's LCAP is to involve stakeholders, to really hear the voices of all of the stakeholders in our district as we make decisions and set goals and measure those, uh, the progress towards those goals. And one of our very important groups of stakeholders are our students. And so this LCAP Student Advisory Committee meets three times a year for a full day, which is really unusual for most districts. Uh, and that allows us to not only help them fully understand LCFF, the funding formula for California and the LCAP, but also to have deep, uh, authentic input and um, kind of analysis of, of what we need to do in our district and how we can continue to grow. So I don't want to spend too much time talking. I have a couple of students who will share a little bit with you uh, about what we've done this year, and then I will let them each introduce themselves. <coughs> Hello, my name is Jackie, and I was actually given the opportunity to be the LCAP advisor for my high school, Gladstone High School. And so my role as the advisor was to organize a group of 10 students who were either involved in like school activities or just academically involved, or even if they were just interested and wanted to be a part of the team. So thanks to the LCAP committee, we were able to learn about how the district budget is utilized through the LCFF and LCAP. 
Another big part of our meetings were dedicating a portion of the time to the district's annual student survey. In the first meeting, we analyzed the 2017 to 2018 survey by going through every question and discussing why students may have felt that way or even why they um, answered those questions that certain way. This survey was discussed through our other meetings as well, and then we, at our last meeting, we were able to analyze the 2018 to 2019 survey, and we used the same process as before, so we went through every question, and we act and actually we were able to compare it to the previous year's survey, and we also saw like, oh, like why did this answer change? Why did students like um, decide to like answer this way instead? And something interesting that we did notice this year was that we received a higher number in participation. So thanks to these surveys, the district is able to meet the needs and student meet the needs that students require. Thank you. Hello again. Uh, I'm Alessandro, and I'm a member of the OCAP committee. And uh, one part, like I said earlier is Azusa is all about uh, a continuous cycle of renewing our, how we go, our rules and our laws and you know, basic stuff, not trying to get too literal. And uh, I feel like participating will be able to get not just my voice, but others out there who feel like, oh, we need to change this or we can improve on these needs. And I feel like uh, not just I, but many others have participated well, and uh, I'm just proud to, proud to uh, just stay um, here in Azusa, do what I like, you know, and just speak to uh, a crowd who actually cares. You know? I have to tell a, a quick story because um, on the very first trip, I ride a bus and I pick up each group at their school, bring them back to the district office. And the first uh, first stop of the first meeting, I don't we don't know each other, so I'm trying to make small talk. And I, I said, oh, welcome, thank you. Oh, I'm so excited to meet you, you know, the future leaders. And I got back on the bus and continued to ride and pick up the other students. And, and when I got off the bus, I realized I really needed to apologize to them. And I, the first thing I said, I said, I need to apologize to you because as you sit in front of me, you are not the future leaders in Azusa. You are the leaders right now. And that's what's so exciting about the LCAP Student Advisory Committee. These are our community leaders helping to impact our schools right now. So I'm gonna let them introduce each other, uh, themselves and what school they're from and what grade they're in. Kathy Cortez, I'm sorry, I'm short. <laughs> My name is Kathy Cortez, I'm in ninth grade. I come from Gladstone High School and LCAP taught me how to show my voice without being shy and how to make other people's voices feel mattered instead of being silenced because of what the majority thinks. So that's what I love about LCAP and being here. Hi, I'm Young Chin Zen from Azusa High, and I'm a sophomore. And I'm really glad to be part of the LCAP community because I get to voice not what only what I think, but all my fellow students think. And I think this is a really great way to find the best way to help not just the students, but the teachers improve and the district improve as a whole. Thank you. My name is Itzel Keener and um, I'm in 10th grade and I go to Azusa High School. I think that the LCAP meetings were very important because I get to like put my in, my, in, my impact and like what I think where our money should go and then also help like other students, I don't know, like help like their voice be heard like in what they need, whether if it's like, educational wise or classrooms or just like, I don't know, like whatever they need, you know? Because like a lot of my friends would be like, oh, you mentioned this in our meeting, so I would. And then I just like it could be helped to be heard. And the, oh my god, I guess I should be shaking, sorry. Um, I just feel like the, the test, like, like the results, like the comparison was like helpful because we get to see what needs to be fixed and like where our next step should be. I 
think we have, we have some certificates for, for you. Yeah, so we have a, an incredible kind of problem this evening because we have a stack this size of certificates to give out uh, to young people who participated. And so I just wanna to say to you, to you all, your, your voice is so valuable. Your voice is, is so much needed. And so I wanna, I wanna thank you for, for exercising that, your, your, uh, that privilege and, and, and using your voice to, to not only represent yourself, but also your, your, your peers and classmates. Um, that's, that's extremely valuable for us, and I want to echo, Jennifer, what you said, that y'all are not future leaders. You guys are leaders here and now and today, so, so thank you for, for being those leaders. And uh, it says here, Zeus Unified School District Certificate of Rec Recognition is proudly presented to you all for contributions to the AUSD uh, through participation in the 1819 LCAP Student Advisory Committee. Thank you. Um, moving on, we have um, 5.3, recognition of the Gladstone High School Sonic Boom Choir. Good evening. I have the honor to introduce the director of our award-winning Sonic Boom Choir, Ms. Jade Clavasia. Good evening to the board. Um, I wasn't expecting to speak, but <laughs> um, thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, I have been in the district, I think this is going on my seventh or eighth year, and I work at both Slauson and Gladstone. And um, this group of kids, this is not the first year that Gladstone has won awards when we've attended competitions, um, but this is the culmination of eight years of me teaching in the district, and these kids who are now seniors, I have had a lot of them since they were in sixth grade, or seventh grade, or ninth grade, so this is a really long time. And these kids dedicate, um, they dedicate so much time to their craft, um, not just six extra hours a week outside of class, but weekends and weeknights and fundraisers, and um, I'm not only proud of their musical accomplishments because they are very competent and talented musicians, but I'm so proud of the individuals that they are because they represent such a wide spectrum of the Azusa community. We have students who are involved in the medical program in JROTC, in art classes, AP classes, um, student leadership, um, our AVID program. And they make time to dedicate time to this program. And we have a saying in my, that's up in my classroom that says, make the family proud. And I'm incredibly proud of them. And um, it's one of my favorite things about working in Azusa is that we are really a family district. Um, I've had so many kids who I've had their little brothers and sisters or their cousins. So we really build from the ground up and um, these kids are a really great representation of what it means to have a dedicated music program in schools that focuses not only on understanding and appreciating talent, but working on it and learning what it means to be a responsible student and future member of the community. So thank you so much for having us and I'm incredibly proud of you. I think I'm talking off my mic. I'm really, kind of, I'm very honored to present this award. I'm your number one fan. I'm at every event, right kids? Yes, I sit right in the front and I'm always there. 
And these students, they, they are our leaders, but they're also our future singers and dancers. You're going to see them somewhere, actors and actresses. They're fantastic. I'm so impressed when I see them singing and I see them dancing and um, they sing songs way from the 40s, 50s. They go all the way up and, and it's, they're fantastic. So I'm proud to present this award to the Zuzi Unified School District. Certificate of Recognition is proudly to present Gladstone High School Sonic Boom Chorus for placing third place and winning best show in Navian's Mixed Division at Burbank Blast. April 16, 2019, signed by Dr. Linda Kaminsky, superintendent, and our board president, Chilene Cruz Gonzalez. And I think that um, Jade followed me because I knew her since Garvey School before she, or was I here first or you were here? First? I don't know. You were here first. Okay. So, and, and she does a fantastic job. She did a fantastic job at Garvey School District, and she's doing a fantastic job here for us. Are we going to get an impromptu? Does anyone show? have anything to say? I know you're all senior. Oh, I knew you would. Are you going to sing for us? Are you going to sing or dance for us? On behalf of my constituents, I would like to say thank you to the community and to the board and to all the educators in the room for acknowledging our success and achievement as a humble show choir. Having done this program for four years, I can tell you it's not always plaques and trophies that keep us going, but the recognition of hard work and determination for our community. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. My name is Amanda Espinoza, and I am one of the captains for Sonic Boom. Um, I just want to say I'm very grateful for staying with all of you wonderful, talented, you know, classmates of mine for four years. Um, Sonic Boom does not only teach us how to perform or sing, but it also gives us insight of how to take leadership. It also gives us insight on, you know, uh, communicating, you know, so I'm very grateful for the lessons that you've taught me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Did anyone else want to say a few words? Um, hello, my name is Isabel Franco. I have been taking this class since Missy has started in the district in sixth grade. And I'm very proud to say that I'm still one of her students my senior year. And I'm so happy to have been in this group and in this class. This class has taught me how to become a better performer, a better musician, how to be confident in myself more. And I'm very thankful for that. So, no, no song? One, one more. Oh, this hi. gentleman sings Amy Weinhardt. Love that song. Um, hi, my name is Raul Gaeta. Um, I'm a captain of uh, Sonic Boom's choir. I just, um, I'm very thankful to be here today with all of my fellow classmates and not only my classmates, but my teammates and um, my family. Uh, Sonic Boom has really become a second home to me and the, the kids standing up here today and well, my fellow um, musicians and dancers are mean so much to me and it's been truly the best you know four years of my life being able to be a part of something and say that I'm a part of a choir at Gladstone High School and be a part of a show choir and be a part of a team um, it's shown me a lot it's taught me a lot and it's it's given me a lot so I'm truly thankful thank you do you have any parents? Are you parents? Yes, no. Are you guys? Um, if, you're, if you well, want. I'm going to sing for us. All right. I'm not a singer. I'm not going to no. sing for you. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to sing. Center at 7 p.m. 
All right, that was great. Thank you so much. I know we put you on the spot, so we really appreciate that you sang for us. Um, and so now we'll move on to item 5.4, and that's Employee Recognition Program, the CUBE Award. So we'll start first. Good evening, everyone. I certainly have a tough act to follow. Well done, students. But I do have the distinct pleasure of talking about our employee recognition program. Uh, the Azusa uh, School District has an employee recognition program that it's had in place since 1990. And 522 employees have been honored in the 29 years of its existence. Um, some phenomenal names that I was uh, reading through as I was combing through the list. Recognized employees receive a cube, and I have one here uh, for their first time receiving the award. And if they receive the recognition a second time, they will receive an encore award. Some phenomenal, phenomenal recognition that we do here. This award is um, uh, it involves the four uh, labor groups, um, our AEA partners, uh, classified, CSCA, uh, AFE at the adult school, and management. They all uh, meet together to determine who the recipients are. The criteria to receive this award is uh, employees have to make a significant contribution to the organization over an extended period of time contributions, which is recognized as a significant accomplishment or recognition to the district, and contributes to the health and welfare of others, as well as staff morale, which promotes a positive working environment. So that's the overview of this award. At this time, I'd like for Mary Pollard to come up. <laughs> On behalf of Ms. Kramer, um, I'd like to present uh, uh, Ms. Pollard with this award. Um, I have a couple words I'd like to share regarding Ms. Pollard. Um, if you were to make your way around Azusa Unified, you will run into many wonderful and interesting people. You will meet students, families, teachers, office staff, custodians, volunteers, and many more folks who are a part of our wonderful community. However, Many will not necessarily wander to the Special Education Resource Center nestled in the hallways of the Special Education Local Plan Area, otherwise known as the SALPA, uh, building just a block away on Arrow Highway. In that office, you will have the pleasure of meeting Mary Pollard. 
For over 18 years, Mary has worked in the Azusa Unified Program for the visually impaired. She started off her time in the program as a support provider for a student enrolled in the VI program. She then pursued certification as a Braille, um, Braille transcriber. She is described by her colleagues as one of the hardest working people they have met. They share what an incredibly positive person she is who brings joy to anyone she works with. Her work is close to her heart because she knows that she is a key for providing students to access their educational program. She takes seriously her role in transcribing anything from a story like Charlotte's Web for a third grade student to a textbook on pre-calculus for a student taking an advanced placement course. She does this tireless, tirelessly day in and day out for, uh, so that as she says, students are able to participate in the classroom and at home in their studies right alongside their sighted peers. That's what I enjoy. She also cites how much she likes working with a supportive group of professionals who serve many of the districts in the San Gabriel Valley providing BI uh, services. She is proud of how greatly dedicated she and her colleagues are um, a special group of students. As Mary says, they are the heart of our program. It is a pleasure to highlight Mary Pollard and the wonderful work she brings to our community and students. Congratulations, Mary Pollard. Mary, Mary Pollard, we recommend that the board, the Board of Education recognizes you for your excellence in your employment, your dedication, your passion, every day that you come to work, that you put everybody else first. And you do an excellent job. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Long, who will be uh, presenting our next recipient. Good evening. I am honored to present this next uh, recipient to Mrs. Cindy Crawford. Right. Oh. Mrs. Crawford was nominated by our counselor, Dr. Corum, and so I'm gonna read a few thoughts, but I jotted down a few extra things on my own. I'm not I'm nominating Cindy Crawford because of her dedication to our students. Cindy has taught Spanish at GHS for many years. However, also during this time, she's taught other courses, including our APEX, credit recovery classes, and oversees our advisory program. Cindy takes her craft seriously. If she sees that a student is not completing his or her homework, she encourages that student to see her at lunch or after school to receive assistance. She ensures that her students have the foundation needed in order to be successful in higher level Spanish classes. She's also very diligent about calling parents. She calls parents every day, <laughs> many times. The call will not just be about their Spanish class, but about all their classes. Parents are grateful for the communication and help from their child. For the 2017-18 school year, 102 students passed an APEX class under her leadership. Approximately 50 seniors would not have graduated without her constant communication and encouragement to students and their parents. Although the class was online, she stayed after school many days for seniors to work in her room in order for them to finish their classes. She currently oversees the afternoon APEX program. For the last couple years, Cindy has overseen our advisory program. This program is designed for our students to receive an additional 25 minutes a day of homework help. Cindy reviews students' data every triad to determine who needs advisory 
and which class would be the most beneficial for them. She coordinates who earns the incentive, which is the early lunch, and the stickers for their IDs. Lastly, she's available for students to get a pass if they need to see a different teacher for advisory. She's an outstanding mother, friend, colleague, and teacher. For these reasons and more, I hope you recognize Cindy Crawford for her dedication and commitment. And I'm gonna add, since December, we have had four Saturday academies at Gladstone High School, and within those four Saturday academies, uh, we've had over a thousand students come to school on Saturday. I actually had a parent roll down his window just this past Saturday and say, what exactly do you do on Saturday? My son has never wanted to come to school on Saturday, <laughs> but begged me to bring him. So this is what we've done. We've had history DBQ class, we've had English essay class, we've had field trips to several museums downtown, we've had sports tournaments and competitions in the gym and outside, we've had art class for the last two Saturday academies, we've had math reteaching and retesting for the last three Saturday academies, and we've had biology makeup labs and makeup tests over the last three Saturday academies. So over a thousand students coordinated by Mrs. Crawford, uh, she has been an outstanding help to me uh, with Saturday Academy, but this is really mostly her. Thank you so much. I appreciate everything you do for our students. This is well-deserved. I am actually going to take this time to um, say a few things myself. I actually have known Cindy for a decade or more. Um, I, I, I actually, when I think, yes, when she started teaching, I think I graduated from Gladstone High School. And um, of course, at that time, I, I really didn't know her. But when I truly got to know her was when I was an aide in her classroom for special education. And the way that I would see her just be on it and call those parents and and sometimes you know um, she would say okay this is the way that I want these things and they need to be organized she's so organized and I actually learned a, <laughs> I, I, I actually learned a lot from her and we worked so well together that there you know there was a senior class one time that half of the class was going to fail and I remember the worried look on her face. And she got on that phone and she called every single parent. And she didn't go home that day until she called every parent. And she made sure that all the parents knew what was happening and how they could help their child, their, their teenager, be able to accomplish what they needed to do to, to graduate and to pass their class, but most important, to graduate. And so I have the honor tonight to recognize this amazing woman, teacher, colleague on this excellence award that, you know what? There's been 500 and how many? 522. 522, and now she's 524. <coughs> so congratulations, Cindy. <laughs> Actually, I forgot to say a few things, one thing. When I got a phone call from her about two months ago, late in the evening, I gasped and I said, uh-oh, I have a son that goes to Gladstone High School. So. All right, thank you. Um, and again, thank you to Cindy and Mary for all your dedication to our district. Um, 
So we're going to move on to the right to, to the rest of our agenda, um, and so the next. Um, so we. <laughs> yeah. There's no public. It's not on the agenda, so we're going to, at this point, do public comment, um, because we're required by law to have public comment on open session. So we have one speaker, um, and that is Jorge Rosales, speaking on 9.4, 10.9, 13.3, and 13.4. So if you'd like to come up, um, you'll have three minutes to address the board. Before I make my comments, I, I would like to ask the board a question, and maybe it's one of the meetings that I missed. About six months ago, the board was supposed to have adopted a communications and engagement plan. Was that ever adopted by the board? That's a question. Um, with respect to item 9.4, my first question is, how was this consultant selected? I mean, there's nothing on the, on, the, uh, on the agenda or the attachments to address that. And the agenda indicates that it's an $8,800 uh, contract, but yet yeah, the contract attachment itself it's only $4,400. Um, does that mean that the rest is for travel, transportation, meals, lodging? Uh, I looked up uh, Snyder Associates, and I don't know if it's the same company, but this is from Boston, Massachusetts. I mean, I'm sure there's local companies that do this type of work. So why would, you know, would the, the district who is struggling with funding, you know, pay $4,400 in travel, lodging, etc. 10.9, the same question. Just uh, what is Termit, Termitin? I'm, I'm sure it's not a consultant. I looked up again. I googled and it's, uh, what I found that it's a commercial internet-based service used by universities and high schools. So I'm, I'm sure it, it don't clarify that. Again, there's nothing on the agenda. What tax means that they take what, what this is? Just this approved ter termitin. 13.3 phase three fencing. I'm a little concerned about the, the big spread of the bids here. The low one being 1,478, the high one being 1,887. That's a 20, almost 30% difference in cost. Uh, I'm sure the documents are not that um, com complex. It's fancy. So why the big spread and, and, bid, and bids? It's, it's questionable. And then the same thing for 13.4. Again, the spread is about uh, anywhere between 27 and 30 percent. So uh, I don't understand why the big spread on bid. So maybe somebody can explain it. And I don't see um, Mark here tonight. So uh, hopefully I'll get some answers. You know, that's one of the problems that I face with this board and the staff is that public has asked questions and we never get answers. Uh, as a courtesy, I think the public should Your be, time is up. You know, provided with a response. We make the time to come to the meetings. That courtesy should be extended to the public. Thank you. Thank you.
So moving on, we have item 6.1, common request by the board. We'll start with Gabriela. I wanted to, to thank everyone who came out tonight for all the recognitions. These are, these are really neat to see, to see, um, you know, all the, uh, the secondary school uh, students come and be part of this LCAP and to, to feel empowered by being part of this committee. And for them, you know, by, by, by what you just said to kind of piggyback off what, what someone else said was that, um, I think it was Adrian, it's very important to empower our youth and to, to just even, you know, give them that label of, hey, you're a leader now. It's not in the future, it's now. Um, that's, that's just grand. It's, it's, it's great. And I, I, I just loved um, hearing them. And, um, and also the, um, the, ES, the ELL, EL, I don't know how to, ESL? ESL. ESL. Um, I love it. She was fully on, I did my resume, and I went to, that, that's amazing. I mean, she, she is so much more confident and empowered by acquiring her second language. And it, it's just amazing to see what our, our um, night school has been able to provide for our community. I, I really, really um, appreciate the work that um, the teachers and that the students also have been able to, you know, put in their part to, to be able to learn. Um, and the CUBE Awards, I, I, you know, I, it's really exciting to see all these extra, you know, um, extra awards just given to, they're not extra, I mean, you have to be like really, really, you know, out there and shine and for someone to recommend you. So thank you guys for, um, for, um, allowing me to distribute that this evening. Um, I did want to let you guys know, I went to the Citrus College K-14 through Forum this last Friday. It was a very informative. Um, I appreciate learning about the programs and the assembly bills that have been put in place um, for these programs to be carried out and for our students to benefit from these um, these exciting programs. They have a brand new, um, I believe it's computer science um, certificate that um, students can attain. Um, they have a, like over 25 certificates. And within those 25 certificates, they can go ahead and um, also uh, get some transfer credits if they want to continue with their education. Um, so I really appreciate that partnership with Citrus College. And I also wanted to let you guys know, I went to the Parks and Recreation Junior Olympics at APU two weeks ago. And it's always nice to see the kids um, partake of that and the parents. And it's just a big event. And if you haven't been before, please join us next year. Um, it's very hot, but it's well worth it to see the kids compete and just have a great time. So thank you. Sure. Well, welcome everybody, and I'm going to second this, seeing all of the awards that were given out to everybody, and it's just amazing. I love that because I think that everybody deserves an award. <laughs> Anybody who works in school districts deserves an award because that's our future. And the children who attend this, you know, at Sierra High School, like I said, my son went, and it's such an opportunity when they learn how to, when they learn differently. And it's a better environment. And he has, he ended up in high school an extra year, but he, like I said, he's designing the security systems at um, major hotels and was traveling all over the country. And that through what he was encouraged to do when he went to continuation school or alternative school. So I think that's really great. And I actually had the opportunity this week or last week to go to Slauson, <clears throat> I saw your daughter there, <laughs> and they had, um, it was for history lesson, and it was for the Civil War, and they had different spots, and students from here at Sierra 
were leading that and just watching them giving the history lessons and, and, and how well prepared and how the kids just really dug into it and having hands on history. I know having kids that grew up on the East Coast, so they could go in, they would come home with musket balls and mom, what's this? And it, it just kind of encourages more want for history. Suddenly his history isn't this boring things that happened years ago that we have to all memorize. So I really, really, really appreciated that. And that's about it. Okay, thank you. Yolanda? Okay, um, I want to congratulate everyone that received an award today. Um, but I did go to Paul Elementary School to see the play Little Mermaid. I was so impressed with those young, I mean, they so young, you know, there, I, I want to say maybe they were second grade. And, like all grades were there and they all participated in some way. Um, and um, the actors, the, the the singers, the girls did a beautiful job. And um, I want to uh, thank uh, the principal, Jennifer Weeby and her staff. The stage was beautiful. The props were done by Dorothy, which is the school clerk. And all the costumes were made by a parent, Socorro Martinez. So I want to give kudos to the School of the Arts. They're, they're going to be where these seniors are next because to memorize a line, I, I don't know. I don't know how they do that, but I think they're fantastic. I was very impressed with those kids. And uh, Azusa Beautiful, on Saturday, March um, 28th, we planted 928 snapdragons in front of the Veterans Walk in front of City Hall. And it was really beautiful. We had um, Cambridge Academy students from Azusa Unified School District. We had parents. We had employees like Melissa Remenek way in the back over there, and Cecilia was here, and she left with her son to go to Slauson. And um, you know, and we even 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 uh, Kevin Nunez and his son that goes to APU. So it's great to get the community getting together, and I, I seen it yesterday, and it's blooming beautiful. So that's what we're using beautiful. I uh, I did go to the Garvey Conference, which is the California Association of Bilingual Education. This is the first time I ever attended the Gabe conference. I really liked that they included um, their parents, classified employees, certificated administrators, and school board members. So we all had input. Um, the, the, the workshop that really interests me was Prop 38, where they support all the students learning and being successful academically in English and in other languages. And I'm glad that we have the dual version already here at Azusa Unified School District, and we will be having our Mandarin. and. Um, you know, um, and, and our high school seniors, that they're already receiving those gold seals for being biliterate, where, you know, they need to read and write um, the, the language, you know, clearly. So I, I'm really glad that we, some of the things they were speaking about or showing us that other schools have, we have it here at AUSD. And I think it's important that we do attend workshops because it was my first time attending a workshop. That workshop, I should say, um, because this is how we learn. So we also have to educate ourselves about programs that other districts have and how they work in their districts and about propositions and policies. There's a lot of things that you know we have to keep up here, but um, I'm an on-hands person, so I enjoy going and seeing how it's done. And, and Ms. Camacho did a fantastic job. I was in her class, too, and, and uh, it was, it's really good. So um, I hope to go next year. I went to Center Middle School, I went to their open house, and um, I love their new entrance, their entrance is to the side. And Mr. Gafari, I always go in his art class because he has amazing projects in there. But I'm still wondering where is the bell, the bell that was in front. I heard it's in storage, but I'll have to check on that. I thought they were gonna put it back sometime. I, I wanna know when, I know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I went to Foothill Middle School, the California Ed Partners. They visited and they had dialogue between the assistant superintendent, um, Mr. Ortega, and his team, and they did a fantastic job. They got a really good report card. And I was very impressed. Also, what they had students from other school sites come and talk about how the program affected them. There were some young ladies, I happened to sit at the table, where students were, and I like to hear their input on how um, they, they like working together, distinct pair share, that they work together and, and they have the opportunity to to express themselves. And this little girl says, you know, I, I didn't like math, but I really, 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 really like math now because, you know, I, I can 
express myself, you know, and I get ideas from other people. And um, she mentioned even some of the shy kids or some of the boys that don't want to talk, they're in there because then they also have to do a video. So they're all partnering together, and I think this is working good, and that's why you got a good report card, Mr. Ortega, and your crew. Um, and also the Golden Days theme it was, uh, is selected every year. I'm the representative from the Golden, uh, Zuzu Unified Board um, to sit on the uh, Golden Days Committee. And um, the, every year we select the theme by a fifth grade class at Azusa Unified School District. So uh, we had five elementary schools participate and 62 entries. So I'm proud to announce the winning theme for 2009 was from Mrs. Pinero's class, Pinero Arroyo, and Mrs. Battle's class from Mountain View Elementary. The theme this year is the Golden Hearts of Azusa, the Golden Heart of Azusa. The students will have a pizza party and um, some of them will be able to ride in the Golden Days um, Parade. And I just want to thank all the schools that participated. Thank you. So first, uh, thank you, Sierra High School and uh, Zeus Adult Education Center for hosting us and having us. Uh, it's great to see the things that you've highlight, highlighted, uh, but it all, also it's been incredible to be able to see it um, firsthand and see you guys in action. So uh, just, just thank you. Keep up the great work. Um, same, same thing. I'm, I'm on. It's, it's an incredible night when we have moments like, like we have tonight to have so many people come and receive awards that are, that are, are just, just so warranted and due. Um, and so to the, to the choir, you know, bravo. Uh, and, and to the, uh, Mary Pollard, I don't, I don't have the pleasure of knowing you very well or at all yet. Um, but but look forward to but to Mrs. Crawford who's who's not here, um, kind of a little special side note. She was my um, high school oh. Spanish teacher, oh. and so uh, <laughs> someone will have to relay this message to her that that I hated it then, <laughs> but I am extremely grateful for the many hours spent <laughs> conjugating uh, verbs. Uh, <laughs> it has <laughs> it definitely. Right, <laughs> it definitely uh, paid off, um, and so no, but but uh, it, it's beautiful to see um, having been in her class as a, as a student, um, seeing a, a well deserved award. So it's, so it's it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I was also able to visit Slauson Middle School and to to see the Civil War experience, and that's the best way to describe it is a Civil War experience because of the the many different things from what amputations look like to the, the packs that, that, and, and the equipment that was carried by, by the soldiers and what the camps, it was just a, a, an incredible hands-on experience. And so my, my hat is off to, uh, to uh, Margie Avison and her crew that put that together. Uh, and then also, I was, I, I was also able to go to Lee Elementary School uh, because they did something similar, uh, but for uh, the colonial times, and they brought in fifth grade students to have a similar type of experience. And so uh, I, I was actually able to be there as a parent to help volunteer teaching kids how to make rope, which was incredible. Um, but they were also learning how to churn butter and, and tie knots. Oh, it was so just an incredible hands-on learning experience, um, and I'm grateful that, that we have uh, such creativity um, and creative programs in our um, district. Um, Lastly, um, I want to I, I want to propose that that we that we talk about something as a as a school board um, here somewhere in the near future, um, where where we evaluate the role of our uh, of our student board member and what that looks like. Even when we when we see tonight where we have our the the, the students that are on the L, L, uh, LCAT committee the LPAC committee they're coming and, and and looking and sharing their their perspectives. Um, and how valuable their voice, their voice is. I think that, that we have a tremendous opportunity, one, to have a student that's here, but how do we empower our students um, to, to really have a, have a greater voice to represent um, their, their peers? Um, I got an email from, uh, from a student at Glasswood High School, Cassandra, where she just kind of said, hey, she had some things that she, that she wanted to share, wanted to share some ideas, some thoughts, some, some suggestions, and so I met with her and a group of her, her friends and, and just talked about some of the, some of the I mean, incredible ideas and suggestions that she had, and I talked to her about the role of a, of, of a student school board member, and, and she's definitely interested in that. And I, I think that there's just a lot of room um, to, to create more space for, for a, a voice, and so that's something I, I'd love for us to, to look at at a future school board meeting. Great. Um, and then um, I'll, go, I'll go next. Well, obviously, I'm the, I'm the last one. Um, so I have a, a couple quite a few things to talk about tonight. Um, so I was able to attend the Slauson Open House. I ran into 
Gabriela with her family. We were having fun in the in one of the science rooms, playing with some of the equipment in the room. Um, um, and um, it was really nice going there. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I you know I I was there just to visit as a board member, but. I brought my son, son along, and there were some kids from his preschool class at Longfellow there because they had oh, siblings at Slauson. So that was just a really great experience. Um, and just seeing some of the work, the quality of the work on the walls, in the classrooms, in the video, in, in Studio 30, um, 26? Thir what is it? Was there yeah, 20, I think 26. it's 26. Right? Um, just, just pretty amazing. Um, mm. So I, I, I really appreciate all the work that's being ha that, that's happening, at, at, especially at Slauson, but at all of our schools. Um, mm -hmm. I also attended the National School Board Association conference, um, and um, I was able to go to um, a couple of really great sessions. Um, one that I just want to mention tonight, though, um, I went to one that um, that was put on by Dearborn, Mich Dearborn um, School District in Michigan, um, and um, I'll I'll be sharing with you the the, the PowerPoint. But they um, over years have very de have developed a very developed process where they take teams out to school sites to do visits. Um, and they have a rubric to, to look at certain specific things, but it's all focused on continuous improvement. So it's not about the individual classroom. It's not about um, pointing things out. It's really about taking that, all that data that's collected at this visit with, with multiple um, administrators, and actually they bring along parents or other classified employees um, and, and certificate employees to, to use that for feedback for the school site, to principal to be able to take back to their staff and look at what they're doing and sort of help Build um, strengthen what they're doing. Um, so I, I, I really want to share that with you because it seemed like a very a very good process. Um, I also was able to attend one of the dual immersion um, informational meetings, um, um, and so there was. It seemed to me like there was some there was some um, um, interest in in the Mandarin program that we're thinking about starting. Um, Look, it's looking pretty exciting. I think more than half the parents in the room that's what they were there for. So that that's exciting to see. Um, and so it's always great to see that um, that we're expanding these these lang these op these opportunities mm -hmm. to to be to learn more more than one language um, for all of our students. Because I mean, I would love to see every single one of our students graduate literate in more than one language. I think that would be that would be amazing. Um, and so um, yeah, so very excited about that. Um, the, the next thing I want to talk about, um, I was just happening. I just happened to be looking on Donors Choose. Some of you may know it's a website where teachers can put projects that they want to get funded, um, and people can, can donate money towards them. But I just want, the reason I mentioned it is because I noticed um, a trend among quite a few of the teachers in Azusa, what they were posting. There were some doing many different things, but one of the ones that I, I saw over and over again was about trying to find, um, and it was mostly from elementary, but um, tr wanting to get order order um, seats and other things that are, that are, that are um, I don't know how to describe them, so what do you call them? Mobile, right? So that, so like, you know, like the bouncy, like the balls that the kids would sit on. So I, I just think, I mean, seeing, and I know it's, it's a, it was a handful, but seeing that there's this desire and seeing that they're trying, these teachers are trying to go outside of the district to get funded. I really think that if we're going to be looking at what, in terms of what teachers need to be able to create this engaging, interactive environment with students, that we think about what kind of seating arrangements we're, what kind of, what kind of facilities and like the seats in the classroom that we're providing to our teachers, right? Because if that's what, that, if that's sort of a growing desire and, and teachers are seeing great responses and I know through research they say that it really helps the kids get their energy out, right? Because they're sitting in different ways, um, that we should really be looking at that and seeing how we can be supporting that and not expecting them to go out and trying to find money from the community to be able to do that. I think that's great. I think I think it's great to do that, but I, but I also think that we need to be responsive to the, to the needs that are that we see in our schools. Um, I also wanted to mention that I was able to attend the, the first meeting of a very intensive long, it's gonna be a 15 month process where our preschool and a handful of TK transitional kindergarten teachers are gonna be going through um, professional development training with the Sobrato Early Academic Learning. And so it was really exciting to see sort of the deep <coughs> engagement um, and folk, and, and really, I was really excited to see what kind of things that, that the kids in these programs do. Um, and I'm especially grateful because through the work of our district, we're actually, we got, we were part of a, a grant program from the state. So um, we have our, these teachers going through this training for free and the state is actually paying, paying for it. Um, but I think it's, I hope, I hope it's going to open a door to us because um, the, just the approach that they have is, is pretty amazing and it's really focused on, I, I really think it takes, it takes common core, it takes this 21st century thought and it really applies it. Um, 
to our classrooms, right? So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Um, and it was it was great to sit there. I, I actually intended just to go for 20 minutes, right, to see what it was like. And I ended up staying most of the day because it was just so so engaging. Um, uh, and, and next, I, I know Arturo was probably going to talk about this, but I was really excited to be able just to quickly um, say hello at the beginning of a meeting that happened at the end of the end of last month, um, where the Gates Foundation came to visit our school um, to to see the work that we're doing in partnership with the California Kelly what California Ed Partners Ed Partners right who's based out of Stanford. Um, so it was really um, I, I, that one I wasn't able to stay all day long, but um, I'm sure you guys did a fabulous job um, showing showing the Gates Foundation what what we're doing in this district. Um, and then finally, um, on a much more serious note, um, I just want to I want I want us as a board to to recognize um, that we that we lost a student. Um, excuse me. We lost a student over over spring break um, at, at Azusa High School, H Haley Don Reyes. Um, and I think, I think, um, well, I'm really. Not, I, I guess I'm, I'm. It's very hard to speak to, but I, I, I felt we as a board need to recognize that it happened and, and recognize that that we need to make sure that we're providing the, the resources that we need for our students um, so that we can address any mental health issues that they have. Or, and I, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying with the student, but I, but I just think that we need to make sure that we're creating this safe and supportive environment so every one of our students feels connected to us. Um, and so um, saying that, we're, we're going to close the, the meeting at the end of this day in honor of Haley. Um, um, and, and I just I didn't want to make I wanted to make sure that that didn't pass and that we that, that we as a board rec recognize and, 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 and at least um, took that opportunity. Um, so with that, um, we'll, um, we'll, and we'll do that at the end of the meeting. Um, and so we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, and that is comments and reports and the request by the student board member, cabinet superintendent. Our student board member was not able to make it tonight. Um, he had um, he had um, another obligation. He couldn't be here, so so he has an excused absence. Although he's not docked for that anyway. Um, but so we'll move on to our um, cabinet. So we'll start with Jorge. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm happy to hear that you are really into the recognition uh, season because at our next board meeting we will be um, uh, recognizing all of our. Um, site district, I'm sorry, site teachers of the year. Um, last Thursday, um, I was able to uh, interact and um, interview um, 18 of our 20 different sites and departments teachers of the year. Um, and it was just an exhilarating um, day of listening to the um, genuine excitement and joy that comes with serving our students as a teacher. and. Um, I look forward to you hearing um, those presentations at our uh, next board meeting. Um, and part of this, uh, the work of this committee is to identify our district teacher of the year, um, which was uh, a very, very difficult process because how do you pick a district teacher of the year from such excellent, excellent educators? Um, but I'm proud to, to share with you that our District Teacher of the Year is none other than our Kathy Hendricks from Murray Elementary. Phenomenal woman, and I'm super excited um, to, to have her move on to the next level, which would be the County <coughs> Teacher of the Year. Um, so more to come on this front, and I wanted just to be able to share that wonderful news with, with, with all of you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Arturo? Uh, thank you for the introduction. Just wanted to share about uh, our Gates visit. Um, we were honored uh, to have the uh, president of the U.S. operation of the Gates Foundation uh, to come and um, listen, participate, and understand the impact that uh, their funding um, is, is having. Um, as I said before, California Ed Partners works with over 50 districts, and we were um, we were chosen to, to be the district where they come uh, and see. Um, I do want to say that uh, during the visit, we, as we were working with California Ed Partners and we were tossing ideas to them, one of the things that we 
kept saying is, if Gates really wants to see you know, the real work, then let's show them the real work. And so um, we took um, some non-scripting. Uh, we invited teachers, uh, TOSAs, principals, and students uh, to come and speak from their experience and, and what they have had. And um, I just couldn't be prouder. I mean, the students, uh, to be able to articulate in the manner that they articulated, to speak about how their writing has improved over the course, uh, to talk about finding a voice, uh, to, to have EL students uh, speaking about reclassification, um, it's it just very, very impressive. And then the teachers uh, to speak about their professional growth and their professional learning and what they're doing in their classrooms. Um, they were very, very impressed. We got a very, very nice letter from uh, Gates uh, thanking us for our participation. We got a standing ovation at the end from the president uh, in sidebar conversations who, who was really appreciative of, of what we were doing in Azusa. So I just want to give a, a big um, thank you to, to the team that has been going at this for about three years now and for the teachers who took a, um, a risk and, and a leadership role to come out and, and speak. So just wanted to, um, to say thank you for that. And then did you want to talk about the um, CCPLLA? <clears throat> Uh, sure. Um, so the day after that, it was it was quite a week. Uh, the day after that, uh, we had uh, almost an all day um, interview, virtual interview. Uh, we had thrown our name in the hat uh, to participate in a new professional uh, leading and learning network, uh, where um, some organizations, CCEE, uh, CABE. Uh, County of, uh, of Schools, San Bernardino, and Families and Schools uh, were coming together to identify five districts, is that correct? Five, five to six districts that were statewide, statewide, that were really doing good work in community engagement and identifying these districts where they would, they would, we would work together that to, to create models and to create examples of how other districts in the state can, can emulate some of those best practices. Uh, it, was, it was extremely uh, grueling. Uh, you heard uh, Jackie today. Uh, Jackie was part, uh, uh, Jackie the student from uh, Glassman High School, was actually part of the interview process. Uh, we had parents uh, from Powell Elementary School, students from Powell Elementary School. Uh, we had um, uh, uh, community partners. Uh, it was just a, a really um, awesome experience. Uh, we did hear back uh, that we were selected, uh, so we're extremely uh, proud of that because I, I want to emphasize that, that this, is, th this was them seeking districts that were already demonstrating leadership and community engagement. This wasn't about which districts can we, can we select that, that need a lot of work. Not to say that we're perfect, but to be recognized um, as one of the five to six um, that's going to jump in for the state of California, uh, we're, we're very, very proud of that. We march, we launch May 2nd. We launch uh, May 2nd, um, and so we're really excited. It's a three-year journey that we're about to embark on, and so we're very excited, and we'll keep you posted on, on how that's going. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, and then Mark Bomarito, our, our Chief Business Officer, is not able to be here today because he is attending the CASBO, the California Association of the School Business Officers Conference, so he's, he's absent today. So Linda? Well, you know the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I'm going to show you a million words here in a minute. We're going to see a wonderful video of an experience that all of our fourth grade students get here in Azusa. It's a partnership with APU for the CHAMP program, College Head and Mighty Proud. This is a short um, preview trailer. There's a longer version that's going to be available on PBS uh, tomorrow. We're not yet sure of the time. 7 p.m., okay. And then after that, we'll be able to, to uh, keep a copy for our own records, too. So take it away.
Today's college visit day was a success, bringing to life a whole new world of opportunities. They were saying after today, they are so excited to apply for college and are so excited for what that's going to be like. And to me, you know, like that's the whole goal of this program is to inspire kids to want to go to college and to want to pursue it. And so the fact that HP Visit Day has kind of brought that desire and it makes me really happy. It's just, it's really helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Would you wor would you agree that it was worth a million yeah. words? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, nice. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right. Moving on, we have item eight point one, student matter, final settlement for the Office of Administrative Hearing, case number two zero one nine zero two zero four seven zero, student number eighteen dash nineteen one dash forty seven. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve. I second. Motion by Jerry Bubbles Vogel, second by Gabriel Arianes. Any discussion? Seeing none, please place your vote. <clears throat> motion passes 5 0. Moving on, we have Section 9, General Functions, Item 9.1, Approve Resolution 1819-127, declaring May 19th to the 25th, 2019, as Classified School Employee Week. Make a motion to approve 9.1. Second. Second. Motion by Yolanda Rodriguez-Pena, seconded by Adrian Greer. Any discussion? Please place your vote. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have item 9.2, approved resolution of 1819-128, declaring May 7th, 2019, as Day of the Teacher. Motion. I'll second. Well, I think we have motion second. So oh, okay. motion by, by um, Gabriela Ariana, second by Adrian Greer. Any discussion? Place your vote. Motion passes 5-0. Next, we have 9.3, Community Schools Initiative Presentation. Good evening, Board President, uh, Superintendent, uh, Board, and uh, audience. I'd like to call up uh, Jose Gonzalez uh, to the podium and Alan Sanchez. Um, we are very excited uh, here in Azusa uh, to be able to participate in a new initiative called the uh, Community Schools. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to our guests. We're going to walk you through uh, some of the amazing benefits that are about to uh, come to Azusa. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Good evening, board members. Uh, Dr. Kamiski, Azusa Unified School Community. My name is Jose Gonzalez, and I am with LACO. I am Director of Community Schools Development. And I'm here to give you a brief overview of our new initiative that we're launching here with Uni Azusa Unified, and in particular, Azusa High School. The click right here, I'm assuming. It's on, it only has one page. Turn it on. What if it only has one page? There we go. I always have a bad habit of, even though the computers are pointing at the screen. All right, um, this slide speaks to our purpose and our mission for our initiative. Uh, purpose of Community Schools Initiative is to build equity for students by highlighting areas of need and leveraging community resources so the students are healthy, prepared for college and career and civic ready. That's somewhat of our mission that we're operating under this school year and uh, for the next three years as this initiative is underway. Um, this model, I have some challenges here. What am I doing at all? Yeah. There we go. I think I just, yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, this model aligns with our priorities for this school year. 
uh, which is improving student outcomes. Uh, we've, uh, we're in the process of developing professional development for all our, our partners in this initiative. Uh, supporting trauma and resiliency and form practices. That has been a big, big, big push from Lake of this school year. We've done uh, five regional uh, trainings throughout the county. Uh, we've, uh, at this point, uh, we've trained over 500 educators on just trauma and form practices. We will be developing uh, tailor-made programs for Azusa High School. Uh, we're gonna have a trauma 101 type of training for our community school staff and then working with the school site leadership team, we'll have tailor-made social emotional learning depending based on their needs. Uh, they're working with in partnership with Department of Mental Health and uh, UCLA. They'll be uh, leading the way uh, based on school needs. Also, a big push behind this is uh, strengthening our community partnerships uh, by building new alliances and networks. Uh, that's the big, um, that's the big initiative. It's really to look at our resources, what we have, and try to build uh, relationships, partnerships in the schools. Uh, we're well aware of that schools have not been waiting for us to come in and offer services, supports. Uh, schools have been operating and have developed their own programs. What we're trying to do is really uh, come in and strengthen those partnerships or fill in the necessary gaps as needed. So if there's a void that's missing in the school site, that's what we're looking to come in through partnerships, through our county agencies, or uh, working with our community-based organizations. There we go. All right, uh, that's the operating definition that we're working um, with. Uh, the easy definition that I give folks in my 30-second elevator speech on what is a community school, uh, I'd like to clarify, uh, there's still some confusion with the term. Uh, it is not a community day school. Uh, community day schools are alternative settings for students uh, that need a different placement. Uh, community school, it's a model, it's a framework where we're looking at bringing uh, all the resources into the school community or as near as possible to the school setting. Uh, we know that uh, families like community school. Families are comfortable being at school sites. So the idea, the philosophy behind it is to provide as many of those services for the school community within the school setting. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at is bringing high-level wraparound services uh, to the school center for students and families. Uh, our aim is to really look at what the barriers are, uh, reduce those, and increase opportunities for students. Uh, there are four components to this framework uh, that we're operating under. Uh, integrated student supports speaks to the fact that we want to bring uh, the supports as close as possible to the school setting, as I mentioned. Uh, we're also looking to create expanded learning opportunities. Uh, that speaks to after school opportunities, beyond the belt type of activities during summer school, any type of enrichment activity where we can partner with agencies that we can support the school. That's what we're looking at. Uh, also increasing, I'm happy to hear the initiative that, that you're, congratulations, that it's underway, that it means that you have a strong parent engagement already. We're looking at supporting that and strengthening that. And um, we know that, uh, I think everything that I've read around research around parents, uh, I, I, it's always mentioned that parents, the more the parents are involved, the more likelihood students are successful. Uh, the challenge is always at the high school setting. Uh, they don't always come as much as we want them to as we do at the elementary school. I always say at the elementary school setting, you have an event and everybody attends. At the high school setting, it's not always the case because the students are older. And my speech is always, that's the age that our students need us the most. Uh, yeah. Because they may know how to cross the street, uh, but they're still going through different challenges that they need uh, help with. So our goal is really working with our community partners and really strengthening the school's parent engagement program. And uh, also, collabor collabor I'm sorry, collaborative leadership practices. Uh, it's really looking at the school team and really working with the school's vision and mission and what they're trying to accomplish. We're not coming in and trying to uh, do anything new. We're really trying to support whatever the school is working, but working with our community-based partners, involving the school community, involving parents, involving law enforcement, whoever, faith-based organizations, whatever groups are working within the school setting, coming together as a team and really try to support the school. Okay, um, 
obviously this is not this is not a new model uh it's been around for a while it is it has a successful track record of engagement um we know that it's effective in improving uh student attendance uh when we reduce those risks for students not being in school uh we know that students are able to come to school uh we know that when students are healthy uh they attend school uh when they attend school we know that they can uh do great things, and uh, more importantly, we want them to be engaged in school settings. So that's kind of uh, what we're looking at. The measures that we're looking at is to lower uh, work on students' uh, schools' absenteeism rates, uh, improve uh, academic outcomes, uh, work in higher uh, enrollment in college prep classes, and improve graduation rates. So these are, what's listed here on the slide are the participating districts. Districts were selected uh, based on a criteria that you see on the left. Uh, it had to do with a study that was done, uh, the Measure of America Portrait of Los Angeles, uh, Education Health LA County Report that was conducted by DPH. So we took certain factors from there uh, and there was a determination that was done. Uh, we looked at uh, education index in the community, underrepresented students, high school graduation rates, graduates with A through G requirements, uh, student suspension rates, chronic absenteeism rates, and violent crimes in the community. Uh, so based on that criteria, districts were identified, and these were the districts that, were, uh, that have committed to being part of this initiative. Uh, in the fall, there were district uh, represented from LACO, along with the Department of Mental Health, county CEO's office, and met with district leadership teams and present this model, uh, this initiative to the superintendent and her team uh, to just to get commitment and buy-in. Uh, from there, the district uh, looked at their school resources, did a similar landscape uh, look, and identified a school setting, and that being Azusa High School for the upcoming school year. Uh, I can mention these are the goals. Um, Improving graduation, uh, moving uh, absenteeism dropout rates, improving in that area, reducing suspensions, and increasing family engagement. Those are the big measures. But in reality, the one we're really, the one that I'm passionate about and making sure is that we have a linkage to services, uh, that we really look at what services are out there, and we really um, provide as many resources to the school sites. So that's kind of the one that I'm really motivated and working behind because I know if we do those things, it will lead to improve, improvements in these areas. Um, the big, one thing that separates us, I think from, like I said, this is a model that's been around. Um, one thing that separates us is that we're really working, uh, being LACO, we have the relationship with all the school districts. Uh, what we're working closely is with the county agencies. And I think that's the exciting piece, that it's really becoming a grassroots uh, model. Uh, there's a lot of momentum behind. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking this information. What we're doing is meeting with county agencies. The county agencies are committing to come into school sites and providing support. We know that the county agencies can meet all the needs. So that's what we're looking at with our community-based organizations and grant opportunities and philanthropy and the foundation work that Lake is working on. Uh, to help and uh, fill in those gaps at the school setting. Um, I, I think one of, one of the strengths also is a strong relationship that we have with the Department of Mental Health and Department of Public Health. Uh, there was a, those of you that follow the County Board of Supervisors meeting this past a week ago, uh, there was a motion on the table to approve funding for the community schools initiative, uh, for the counties, LAUSD as well. So uh, it was approved. Uh, we are looking at uh, a funding a coordinating position and a parent engagement position that are dedicated to the supports of this uh, model. So that was a great, great, uh, great, uh, uh, what is it, uh, initiative that was approved uh, as far uh, as, far as uh, bringing the resources to the school site. So, and moving forward, we'll be working with the school site leadership team and identifying uh, appropriate uh, uh, members that will be able to fill those positions uh, to work at the school setting. So it's a lot of work to manage the resources. We are aware of that. We don't expect to all of a sudden throw resources at a school site and they'll take care of themselves. So we will have a dedicated coordinator at the school site uh, that will really work on the linkage of the services and really have a, a parent engagement liaison 
helping parents navigate the resources, all the county uh, portals that we have in place, and really trying to uh, support the school and bringing parents on board. Can you clarify something? So is that at each school site we'll have that, or that's for, or for the 10 districts? It is for the 10 districts. So you have one, two people? Okay. Correct. Okay. No, no. So just for, for clarity, the question, uh, Jose, let me, um, so uh, there's 10 districts. So Azusa High School will get one of each of these people. So two staff members full-time at Azusa High School. That's correct. And these are the districts that have been identified. Uh, like I said, there is a lot of momentum. Uh, they're requesting we identify additional districts as well because uh, this is coming from the Board of Supervisors. They really want uh, this model to be at schools. Well, we're always happy to have more than one high school. <laughs> I, I have a question. So, so inst yes. I know that you just, just right, right now, you just said that you're looking for other districts to, to bring this program to. Have you guys considered um, for example, if a district has two high schools, being able to provide those services for both of the high schools within the community. So we've had those conversations. I think as we are, I, right now we're in the implementation phase. And in all honesty, we really want to start in one school setting. And really, I think that's the direction that we will be talking with uh, your leadership teams as to the growth of it. Because that's kind of the direction we want to go. All, the model will be different at every district. As you can, you know, the, some districts are larger than others. Uh, we're looking at, that's an option of growing to another, a neighboring school. Also looking at growing into the feeder schools as well. The middle school, the elementary school, so we can kind of serve a whole pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we're, we are definitely looking at different models uh, as growing, uh, how we can bring those models to the district. Yes, that's kind of the next phase after uh, we launch in one location. Uh, at this point, I'm going to introduce Ellen Sanchez. She is with Department of Public Health, and there's an additional component uh, that she'll be speaking to uh, regarding the, this initiative. Okay, I'll let you fly. <laughs> okay, good evening. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Mr. Mr. Ortega. Um, I have to say, it was really a pleasure to see to get a glimpse of all the great programs that you have and to see some of your students who are so involved in the leadership programs because that's something that's very dear to my heart and I know just how it turns people's lives around. So I'm really glad to see that you're investing so much in that arena. Um, anyhow, I wanted to introduce you to the program that um, the Department of Public Health is um, commencing this year, which is the Student Wellbeing Initiative. And this is something that we are hoping to um, put in place on, at Gladstone High School this year. Um, this initiative is, um, the goal of the initiative is to bring preventive health care to the students on site. Because what we do know, what all the research shows, is that teenagers are very likely to not have had any um, medical care, have not seen to see, have seen a medical provider any time in the last year, and um, referrals to when they need to go elsewhere, when they when we refer them to go to some place that's not where we're standing with them, um, don't usually come to pass. Um, the, the, so the goal is to bring the, the services similar to the program Jose was, was describing to you, to bring the services onto campus for the students. And the services that, that will be involved in, in the well-being centers will be um, mental health services, sexual health services, and, um, and drug use, harm reduction and prevention. And so the partners that we have for the initiative are Planned Parenthood of Los Angeles and the Department of Mental Health. Um, so we're, we're doing this 
on, at 50 sites throughout the county. 32 of them are in LAUSD, and we're going to 18 in the independent districts throughout the, throughout the county. So in your district, the one that Mr. Ortega has asked us to look at is um, Gladstone High School. That way we kind of share the wealth. You have, you have Jose's program at Azusa, go. and you have this one at Gladstone. So there are services <coughs> available to both sets of students. Good. Um, these, uh, one difference between the programs, well, there are many differences between the programs, but this one is really going to be um, solely for the students of the campus. It's not a community, uh, community members, family members are not gonna be res uh, receiving services at the student well-being centers. Um, they will be, they will be um, staffed by two health educators and a clinical health educator and um, the Department of Public Health will, I mean, Department of Mental Health will be coming in um, 10 hours a week to do groups with, with the students as well. But they're really meant to be kind of drop-in centers where students can come you know, around their classes at lunchtime, after school, before school, drop in, ask a question, ask to sit down with someone, spend their a little hangout time if they want to, and, and make it. We're going to make it a comfortable place for them to be, so that they can um, really develop relationships with the staff and be able to really. Um, get that kind of support from the adults in the, in the center. Um, I, I'm hoping it will also be a place where they'll, they'll get supports from other students as well. There is a strong leadership component to each of the centers as well. We will be training um, uh, students to be health advocates and to do work throughout the school community. Um, as part of their service. There is also going to be a, a promotora, a lay health educator assigned to, to the campus so that uh, she will be working with the parents um, and, there, and really providing a curriculum of education to the parents on how to communicate with your student around health issues, the sensitive issues that we'll be addressing in the center and to kind of really serve as partners to the parents in um, guiding their students through this period. So um, let me see what I, okay. Okay, so these, these are the activities and the services that we'll be, we'll be providing. Um, so the substance and tobacco use prevention reduction, the social and emotional health. There is, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your student. Um, this is something that so many campuses are dealing with, and um, it's going to be a real strong focus of, um, of the center's work, is um, dealing with depression and anxiety and um, suicide prevention. Um, then with the sexual health services, we'll be doing education in the center. We'll also be doing a supplemental education in the classrooms to assist the health teachers with more in-depth um, education around all of the issues that we're addressing. We're going to have limited contraceptive services. Um, emergency contraception and uh, screening and treatment for the common sexually transmitted infections that occur among young people. So uh, can I ask you a question on that? Yes. So do the parents need to give you permission to, or mm -hmm. if, if the parent does not want their child to, all just, you know, to listen to, to a contraceptive, what, what, what happens to you? They have to talk to their, their student about it. This is, all of the services that we're providing 
are services that young people ha have the ability to consent for for themselves, sexual health, mental health, and substance well, use. Well, but if they're under 18, mm -hmm. um, they can do that. Once they're 12, okay. the law provides for that. So if we get an angry parent saying, so it's, is, it, and is this confidential, these services? Yes. Okay. And, and so if you have an angry parent, you can, yeah. um, our staff will be very well trained in how to okay. help them understand why this is important and, for, and um, to try to get them to see that we're really there to partner with them. Well, thank you, yeah, thank you for in that. raising and their yeah. children. Um, um, I, I think it's absolutely wonderful seeing the whole sex ed, sex, sexual health. I, I, I was that parent who would hear about Planned Parenthood on the radio and turn around to the 11 year olds in the car, listen, you know, okay, <laughs> start early with you. But um, with the self image and relationships, it's also going to delve into abusive relationships. Absolutely. And I, you have my heart. <laughs> Absolutely, that's really, really important the earlier you can start yes. because this is when they're just entering into more serious relationships mm -hmm. and really need to have some sounding boards for yes. getting an understanding of um, what makes a healthy relationship you and what, what is a red flag for mm -hmm. an unhealthy relationship. You, you, like I said, you just you just own my heart. Thank you. Is <laughs> well, thank is you. there a is, is there a means to which to, to communicate this uh, in line with what you're asking, Yolanda, to communicate this to parents ahead of time to let them know that these yes, uh, absolutely. Are, One of the things that we're, we're trying to do, I'm trying to get the staff, the the health educators are going to be supervised by senior staff um, at each, at each site, and they. Um, this, well, the senior staff are going to be supervising four sites, so they won't be at the site full time. But they will be, I'm hoping that they will be on board, the senior staff at least. Uh, they'll be hired before the end of the school year. Um, and what I'd like them to do is to have an opportunity. I've been asking each of the principals as I meet with them if they could arrange for a chance to briefly meet with the staff and to briefly meet with parents to let them know proactively that this is coming and, 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 and this is why and this is how we can be supportive of what we're trying to do with your children. If but worse comes to worse and we don't get them on board before the school year ends, um, we will be meeting with them at, you know, in August as early as the school can provide the opportunity. I, I have a question. How, how do you propose to, to be able to um, engage the students and to let them know of these services? Um, We're going to be doing some, um, well, for one thing, the health educators will be going into classrooms, mm -hmm. uh, not only to deliver the, the um, health education curricula, but also um, They'll, they'll be working with the, the site staff to, and will go into advisory or to see where they can plug in. Uh, a number of the principals have suggested being present at, the, um, at grade level orientations at the beginning of the year. But then we're also going to be doing some fun outreach activities, some you know, urban art activities, music, Things to kind of bring attention to the okay. to the opening of the center and to and then they'll have they will have the student leaders that will be involved with the center, you know, kind of being that liaison on, on campus to the center. I, I think it's really great, you know, engaging them with just um, what you said those those activities. Um, I understand that these services are just uh, strictly for our, our students. Um, however, with those activities, do you guys plan to engage the parents as well to be able to, um, you know, for them to attend? Um, would they be welcomed? Um, the activities that, that we have for the students will be done during the school day, so it wouldn't be open to the parents, but there will be other activities 
and presentations to the parents. Okay. Absolutely, right from the beginning of the school year, if not before. So, so what will the role of the promotora be? Okay. They'll be working with the parent coordinator on, on, this, on site to, to do outreach to parents, to bring them in, and then they have an, an eight-week curriculum that they would like to involve parents in about teen health issues and to be educating them about that. They'll also be available one-on-one -on -one to, to parents. Well, okay. thank you so much. This, this is great. I, I can't wait to see what it looks like and um, to see you know, how our students um, and our community will be able to um, be able to take the opportunity of, uh, opportunity to um, be able to oh, I got tongue twisted sorry <laughs> be able to take the opportunity in these services the wrap around wrap around services that are needed right. so much um, with like you just said um, with this age group of, of the high schoolers um, mental health and just I, I'm really excited to see what uh, what this when this t uh, takes place and starts. Thank you. Well, we are as well. Thank you. I think um, next steps on our end, it will be to, we're developing our implementation plan based on uh, the team did a nice job on really laying out the strength and assets of the school site. Uh, so just meeting with the county agencies and see uh, how we can support the school. Uh, we'll be sharing that implementation plan for input from the school sites. Uh, and also we're having a kickoff uh, meeting sometime uh, early May, late June, uh, where we'll invite district representatives as well as school side leadership teams. So we're also very excited uh, to be working with Azusa Unified and Azusa High School, and uh, thank you all very much for your time. I, I'd like to add a couple of, of things. Um, number one, thank you, Jose and Alan. Uh, they are extremely responsive um, with email and contacts. Uh, we have already sat down with both principals uh, of the high schools and have, have had face-to-face uh, -face meetings with them. Um, if I missed it, I apologize, uh, but I do want to point out that this is an at least three-year commitment that they're, that they're giving to, uh, to Azusa. And so we, we, can, we can be um, confident that at least for the next three years, beginning with next school year, uh, these are services um, that, will be, that will be granted. Uh, additionally, because of being part of the community schools initiative, uh, there are other things that are springing up that that we are that we are benefiting from. I'll just give you two quick examples. Uh, Dalton Elementary School is going to be receiving professional a uh, two-day professional development from the Department of Public Health on uh, a Mile Club initiative, and um, we are in talks with uh, Think Together to. Uh, submit a grant uh, for after school services uh, for our high school. And so these are things that are, that are being born out of us being part of the community schools initiative. And so I'm, I'm excited about the things that are, that are yet to come uh, from this partnership. Thank you. So I just have a, just a couple more questions. So um, Jose, in terms of, um, I, one, I would really appreciate that there's so many districts in the San Gabriel Valley identified, so I think it helps, it helps, it will help build sort of like relationships between those districts. But how do you, um, just in, in terms of how it's going to be rolled out, is it going to be district by district, or how are the districts going to collaborate with, I mean, is it going to be like each district is going to do their own thing? So, how, how is that gonna yes work? and no. Uh, we're going to have, we're working on having someone networks based on regions and coming together. So our coordinators will have, uh, definitely meetings with our coordinators or site coordinators and our site teams uh, within where they were going to receive the training and come together and share best practices. So that's the idea because it is kind of, you know, if you saw the screen, we're from Anno Valley all the way to Pomona are the districts. So it's kind of a, a large area that we're covering. So we're looking at coming together in regions and having uh, these collaboratives kind of like a network approach, working together. Okay, great. Um, and then the, just the other thing I wanted to say to you, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Alan. Alan, yeah. I just want to say I really appreciate this partnership. I think, um, and, and I'm, I just want you to convey this back to the, the department. I think there's always been a frustration from school districts around how do we partner and how do we, um, 
I especially access a lot of those dollars that have been sitting in, in the Department of Public Health in terms of getting them into the schools where they were intended to be. So, I, and, and hearing from other counties about what they're doing in terms of partnerships. So I really appreciate this, and I really I hope that we can find ways to do even more things together because I think um, it's, we need to get beyond our silos. So I really, I think this is a great opening. I, I, I actually have a question, Ellen. Um, for the wraparound services at a GHS, does that include um, homelessness? In, the, in our center? Yes. Is there any measure H money? Uh, in so it has not the no, wraparound services if from the Department of Public Health, it's really working through our initiative. Uh, really, that York. yes, okay. the community Got schools. It. It's really looking at foster homeless students are the big uh, sub uh, special populations that we're looking at and supporting them. Uh, so yeah, we're working with those units closely uh, to bring support, and we're developing kind of like a data piece where we can really track those services better for those students. Are you working with um, any agencies from any of the spas, spas three? We're working foster with our own internal Eleco foster agent, foster group, and uh, homeless. Uh, Departments. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that answers. There's, you know, I think just one piece to add to what Mr. Ortega mentioned. There's a lot of momentum behind it, and I, I think I just heard you just mention that uh, schools are asking for help, but I think agencies also have a hard time getting into schools and navigating into the school system. So using the relationships that LAC LACO has established, using this uh, vehicle as a way to get in, there's a lot of good things that are coming your way. Uh, not, if it's not necessarily for Sousa High School, but to the whole entire district because of this model. Thanks. One thing that I didn't mention that's going to be a part of the center um, will be there will be a call center that will be available to the students after hours, and that's a place where there will be referral referrals as well as you know immediate. Um, listening and responsiveness, helpline kind of uh, responsiveness. But I think in terms of, of your question about homelessness, I mean, we will be available to the students at, during the school day mm -hmm. and, and after school. And then we'll, we'll help as much as we can through that call center in the after hours. I'd like to, um, before we close, I'd like to thank both um, Jose and Ellen for coming here. And also, in particular, give um, credit to the new superintendent of LACO, relatively new superintendent, Deborah Duardo. She came in now, I think this is her third year. And her first year, she called a meeting, uh, I recall, in November of the superintendents in the area and uh, broke us into small groups and asked us, what can LACO do to help you? And I was, um, well, like many other people, voicing the concern that our kids need supports that aren't available in the community. And that um, it, many of the supports traditionally have gone to LAUSD because of its size, but that there were many other students in many districts throughout the county that had students who ju needed just as much support. And I appreciate her willingness to, to listen to us and to act on that. She, you know, her, her leadership in touching base with the different departments to get them on board and being willing to work with us and to facilitate that is really to her credit. So thank you both Ellen and Jose, and please convey to, to Deborah Dorda how much I appreciate her support. All right, um, so we'll move on um, to item 9.4. Consider approval of consultant Marilyn M. Snyder and Associates, resolution 1819-129. Make a motion to approve, or are we gonna have a presentation? No. Okay. Motion, is there a second? Second. Um, there's a motion by Jay Bybus Vogel, second by Adrian Greer. Any discussion? Um, Linda, can you just talk about what um, what will be happening with, with... Oh, you have a question? Oh, go ahead, no, ask, ask. Oh, go ahead. You know what, I, I want her to go ahead and explain. Okay, sure. So um, one of the things that districts engage in from time to time is really looking carefully at their strategic plan and the direction of the district. And this district did that in 2012. They took a deep dive into thinking about what is laying ahead for our district. We did it again um, with the um, implement, or the beginning of the LCAP, the 
local control accountability plan and developing goals as a board and then again goals tightly focused on the LCAP um, and, and trying to see, make sure that there was a tight alignment between those. This is going to be an opportunity. Um, Marilyn Snyder is a California-based uh, consultant who works with school districts and cities as they are analyzing their strategic plan, their strategic direction to facilitate the conversation with um, school boards, with the administrators, with teachers, with classified staff, with parents to get a sense of what is the direction in which to, which people have a consensus around movement forward. You had a question? Yes, she will be working with a district at, uh, towards the end of June. And she, she comes with an associate, that, and she actually comes for two sessions. This, um, the agreement with her will allow us to have a session in June, and then again six months later, um, to, we'll, in June we'll look at what will be the goals and the, and the metrics that we'll use, and then six months later we'll gather again to check our progress. She'll be facilitating both of those with her associate. Any more questions? Discussion? Seeing none, please place your vote. <clears throat> Motion passes 5 0. Moving on, we have item 9.5, the 2018 19 local control and accountability plan April update. Once again, good evening, uh, board president, board members, superintendent. Um, before we uh, begin the, the presentation, I want to kind of just build a little bit of context. Um, the LCAP is approved in the month of June, and that sets in motion what, what we are doing that following year, right? And so in, the, in June, last year of 18, uh, even though we didn't approve an LCAP, we talked about the LCAP and the actions and services that we were taking. So we are taking those actions and services, we're looking at those metrics, we're spending money, our, our budget. We came to you uh, in January and gave you an update and said, okay, as of, as of December, this is how we're doing with our metrics, this is how we're doing with our actions and services, this is how, do, how we're doing with our budget. Today, is the second update, uh, even though it says April update, it's really a February update, because that's when we're starting collecting uh, data. Um, so with your permission, what, what I'd like to do is only highlight what's different now from January. Okay. But the reason we, we still give the full report is for those who want to, right, read it a little bit more carefully, uh, for our community, because this is a, a public document that's, that is uh, obviously on our board agenda. Uh, and also as a reminder, this has a sister document that is even thicker and more dense uh, than this. And that is uh, also uh, on our website and also in Spanish. Uh, so this is available as well if, if people really, really want to dig in. So again, with your permission, I'd just like to highlight uh, some of the, 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 the things that are different from the last time we were up here presenting this to you. Uh, is this? No, no. Okay, there we go. Huh? <laughs> Kathy, I think you're gonna have to do it because either the battery's out or... Um, yep, I am. You wanna recognize that? One more. One more. Okay, so here will be our first stop. I uh, just want to point out uh, that in 1819, when we look at our appropriately assigned uh, teachers, when we came in uh, January, uh, that was 99.6. Uh, since then, that has been rectified and corrected, and so we are now at 100% in that area. Is that you? Okay, um, here we're gonna take a quick, a quick uh, stop here. Um, 
we have increased uh, the number of students enrolled uh, in, in orchestra, adding 11 additional students since the last time uh, we were here uh, presenting to you. Oops. Uh, our budget um, has definitely uh, um, changed from, from the last time uh, that we came here. And so if you, if you look at this, uh, almost 75% uh, of this budget has already been expended. Um, and just as a quick reminder, this is as of February. Um, so expenditures have happened uh, since, since then uh, as well. So that, that's goal one, which is around student achievement. Uh, goal two, which is really around our English uh, learners. We're going to stop uh, here at our um, reclassification rate. Um, so in 1819, uh, the last time we were here, that was 9%. Uh, since then, we have increased the number of ELs who have uh, reclassified. This is a dynamic number, unlike like SBAC, where it's like one-time testing. This is a process and something that that's continuously moving. So this is not the final number, but we have had a 3% increase uh, from the last time uh, we, we were here in January. Uh, again, in regards to uh, our budget, uh, we continue to um, have our expenditures, uh, about a million dollars more from the last time uh, that we were here. Uh, again, we continue to expand and we continue to use um, those funds. Goal three is all around uh, college and career readiness. And so for that, we want to make a quick stop all the way to our budget. Um, this one we have, oh, that's kind of, thank you. Um, we have, uh, as of February, we, we have about half of our expenditures um, done from this budget. Unlike goal one, two, four, and five, um, Susan uh, has been do doing an amazing job of securing uh, additional grants, uh, particular to uh, college and career readiness. And so when possible, uh, those grants are, are, are used. And so um, that's why we see a little bit of slowdown. But again, this, this continues to be a fund and, uh, and an area that, that we continue to do, that we continue to expand. Uh, goal four is our all around uh, parent and student uh, engagement. And so if we look at, uh, can you lower that a little bit, Kathy, please? Yeah, so if we look at our uh, engagement indicators, um, we have, uh, we, we, we do have a change here in the chronic absente absenteeism. We do have a 1% uptick, so that's something that we're, we're continuously looking at. Um, but we do have a downtick in suspensions. Uh, that was 2.2 the last time that we were here in January. So a small, a small downtick on that. I'm not going to speak too much about this because we have a presentation all around the survey and about the survey. Um, but we we do see a 61 um, drop uh, from last year, uh, but it's still well over the number of uh, surveys uh, that we need in, in regards to a, a robust. Uh, uh, sample size. Uh, in regards to uh, some of the outcomes, again, I'm not going to spend too much time. We're going to have a whole presentation on this, but you do see an uptick from last year's survey to this year's survey in regards uh, to to some some of the things, specific things that the parents are feeling about uh, our district in regards to to safety and participation and engagement and connectedness. Kind of the same um, trend here with uh, goal four, uh, roughly about 50% in February. Um, and again, we, we continue to expand on, on those goals. And then finally, goal five is about the learning environment and the school climate. And for that one, we, again, same, same kind of um, pattern with about 50% uh, through uh, through February of 2019. 
I do want to pause just a little bit here because this is important and this is different and we're getting very, very close to some, some, some big pieces in regards to uh, the ALCAP. Uh, this week, we're meeting with the Parent Advisory Committee Plus uh, on Thursday. Then we meet again the following Friday and then we meet again shortly after that. Um, this PAC Plus this week is to really dive into this update, dive into uh, the survey, and really set the stage for next steps. Because the following week is when we, we take, for the first time, we take a, a template of proposals for, for the outcap. Um, and so we go line by line in a, in a small you know, fashion with lots of opportunity to ask questions and clarification. And, and we go through a process where they're gonna be able to give input or ask why why are we doing this why is this this whoa what where is this green coming from and so just to kind of talk that through really keep our ear to the ground in regards to what they are advising um, so that when we present to the board of education we come uh, prepared with that uh, so that you understand kind of that that process that that we are that we are going through we will do the same thing with the board of education uh, Kind of going step by step on on the LCAP, and um, and then from there we produce um, our annual update, which will come to you in June for a public hearing, and then finally for uh, an approval. Questions? Any questions? No. Mm -hmm. Adrian, yeah, I, I just have. I just have one question, and yep. we might get to it on the survey portion. Yep. You, you talked about uh, the the thousand fifty or whatever it is as uh, as being more than what we need to have a robust uh, sample size. Do we um, can can you send in? Do you know or can you send it in? What what is that sample size? And also the confidence inter confidence interval. Is that something that? Ninety nine and five percent. Ninety nine and five percent. Ninety nine and five percent. And the, the sample size to make is uh, probably a couple. Okay. Wow. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving on, we have the next item, um, 9.6, the district annual survey presentation. Hello again, uh, board members and Dr. Kaminsky, and um, this is a great little segue right into our, uh, our survey uh, results for the 2018-2019 school year. Um, back in uh, January, February, we uh, instituted our survey. All the surveys are done in-house now. And so uh, we sent surveys out to our, all of our stakeholders, our parents, our students, grades six through 12, and our staff members. And I have to just pause and thank um, all of the efforts by so many people who, who helped to, to get this survey out and in the hands of, of all of the people and as many as possible to take it. That would just be our principals, our community liaisons, our uh, communications department, Lika and Sam, just constant you know, Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and whatever I could talk them into putting it on and just really making sure people were aware that they have an opportunity to have a voice uh, in, in what we're doing and how we are constantly trying to be better in Azusa Unified School District. So thank you to our directors and department heads as well who all con uh, contribute to collecting the results for us. Um, so we, as, uh, as just like the LCAP update, today, tonight I'm gonna give you, it's night, isn't it? Tonight I'm going to give you uh, really kind of a, a big overview, and I'm gonna do this as a team with some of the directors from uh, our Ed Services Department um, of some of the results. But just like with the LCAP, you have and you received in your Friday packet a full written analysis of the survey results, and this is also available to the public uh, on our website in English and in Spanish so that everybody can see the results of uh, what we have and what we're using as pieces of data to really drive um, some decision making in our district and in our schools as well because uh, principals will also get their site level data that they can use to really analyze what's happening at sites and where the next steps are. So the first thing I'd like to do is kind of uh, give you a bit of a snapshot on um, all right, Kathy, next slide. Okay. 
This is a snapshot of, of who the participants are. And, and this first slide gives you uh, a picture of our parents. And yes, this is about 50 fewer respondents for our parents. And so as someone who's always trying to analyze the whys, I'm, let's see, this year we had more social media. We had an incentive based on a donation from a community member. Uh, with, we gave away two $75 gift cards. Um, our, parent, our principals did presentations. So we're gonna look at it. We obviously, we have really good uh, reliability, validity, we have enough uh, good sample size, but the more people that can take the survey and feel like they're having a voice, the better in our district. And so I will continue to look at how we can, and I'm gonna do that with PAC Plus this week. What are some ideas that they have um, for parents in particular? How can we better get this, this survey out to them and, and get them completed? completing it. So with that said, you get a, a pretty good breakdown of, of where grade levels, the higher levels, elementary, middle, and high schools, and then by grade. And you can see it's a very balanced representation by grade level of uh, the parents that took our survey. Our students, uh, again, very balanced. Uh, we had a, a big increase. This was a thousand more students this year were able to take our student survey. Uh, than last year, and so again, schools doing concerted efforts, principals, teachers, taking time to have students um, voice their input on, um, on the questions on our survey. And so again, this is grades obviously from the chart, grades six through 12, and, and it's very balanced. We, we tended to get just about similar amounts from all grade levels. Next was our staff, and uh, you can see this uh, is about 224 additional staff members this year that we had take the survey. Um, and the, the graph really represents the numbers. Um, we do have our largest two groups, our teachers and our classified staff. So it, it's to be expected that the percent of respondents were higher in those two areas. But this again gives you a great snapshot of, of who's contributing um, their voice. All right, next slide, thank you. So I'd like to give you three slides that give you a very big overall uh, level of um, satisfaction. A couple of the questions on the survey and, and share these with you tonight in this forum. And of course, you can get into the, big de the deeper details of those in, in the written report. I've also taken a moment, uh, an opportunity here to show you last year's results. And I want to just kind of talk about that briefly before we, we go further. You can see at the top, we have this year's 1819 survey, and we have the strongly agree and strongly disagree. And I know you can't see it on the slide. Can you roll the slide up just a little bit more, Kathy? There we go. You can see that last year we had a, a middle, but it, it really is an ambivalent response. And if you recall, we've had conversations about this talked about it within our, our leadership in Ed Services and um, decided let's, let's take that ambivalence out because it really doesn't give us any good information. Let's, let's force a choice. Let's, let's force people to really think through whether they agree or disagree or whether right. they're satisfied or not satisfied. Right, we talked about that because we weren't sure if maybe they didn't understand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's great. Yeah. No. So, so I just want you to be aware of that as we look at the results. And if you do compare and, and uh, from last year, you know, to, to keep this in mind and to remember that, you know, when we look here and we go 70% of parents are satisfied with the experiences at their student's school. This was last year. Mm -hmm. And then we jump up to this year, we have 87%. And uh, you know, initial thought is that's great. That's a good improvement. And, and to really ensure that that is good growth, what we want to look at is definitely what changed in this yellow area, which tells us where did these people go? Last year, these were our ambivalent people. Did we see the majority of them move towards agreeing, or did we see them moving towards disagreeing? And so notice here, 13, 14, about 1% when they really thought about their satisfaction about their experience in their schools, 1% said, you know, I, I'm, I don't agree, I'm, I'm not. But 16%, when forced to make a choice, said, you know, I am. 
I am. So again, I just want to make sure that we're looking, if we're doing comparisons, that we're looking through that lens. Um, notice this one. This again, a very positive, be, uh, I mean, uh, is different because we have a larger number of our ambivalent folks moving into a disagree. And then, so the, the growth here is, um, is that we have, uh, what is it, about five, six, five people, 5% five here moving into the disagree. So keep that in mind. Overall, what I do want to say is overall, when we look through all of the questions and all of the results, as we compare from last year to this year, for the most part, what we saw was the majority of the ambivalent responders last year were responding in the positive. So when we look at that overall uh, view, we can say, you know, we do have some improvement. And you'll see later on, you, you can actually, there's some real clear, uh, clear growth and, and, sh and shrinkage of the strongly disagree and disagree. So as we look at parents, let me see, I'm gonna go on to the, oh, I can't do it, next, next slide. Let's go on to the students. And you can see here is the students uh, overall, again, overall satisfaction and uh, comparisons between last year and this year. We had almost a third of a students, for example, doing the ambivalent response here. And so while we did see an 11% increase here, the majority of them were strongly agreeing that they feel like they have some opportunities for input. So is there any way that you put um, on the strongly disagree uh, why? So we know how we can... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, with, with some of the questions, there, well, the very end of it, I should say the very end, we do oh. provide an open-ended, you know, what else would you like to tell us? But one of the most powerful things, as you heard earlier, is that I took these results... Um, to our student LCAP committee, and I began to have them have discussions and dialogue around them, and they looked at the numbers, they did the comparison, they were thrilled that they were the very first ones in the entire district to see the results of the student survey. Um, they said, the board hasn't even seen these? I said, no. So, uh, and they really dug in deep around what was going on, and they give some amazing, amazing feedback to us on you know, what we can do next. Yeah. So again, this is our students' kind of overall big picture view of some satisfaction levels and, and feeling like they have voice. I'm excited to see next year, as we use this, the same uh, measurements with only the four, four choices and no longer having the ambivalent response to see that comparison as well. And, and again, we're getting some very good data. We are continually trying to improve the information that we get and be able to use it in ways that will contribute to um, improving what we do for students here. Now these next few slides are gonna come up. I'm gonna bring up my, uh, my wonderful esteemed colleagues who will share. Dana Mitchell will come up and she will share goal one. She'll be followed by Norma Camacho who will share uh, goal two. And then Susan Brochet will come in and share goal three, followed by Gary Creel who will share, share goal four. And then after that, I will come up and um, close it out with a review of just a, a few points on each, uh, each of these slides around our LCAP goals. Good evening. LCAP goal one um, is around our actions and services that serve to improve academic achievement and close achievement gaps. And overall, we definitely see um, some very positive indicators uh, from the data. One in particular, uh, last year in 2017-18, we put in one question for students um, regarding opportunities that they believe that they had for academic discourse and collaboration, and really as a result of our professional learning. And this was the year that we uh, had a, uh, the beginning of our professional learning with Cali, um, really focusing on um, Student engage, increasing student engagement opportunities, providing students with increased opportunities for academic discourse using rigorous, relevant, complex text, tasks, and questioning. And so the data show that 93% of student respondents agree that there are opportunities for collaboration and academic dialogue in their classes 
reflecting an increase of almost 18% from the prior year. So that's very exciting data. Thank you. So goal two focuses around the academic achievement and services for our English learners. Um, and overall, we saw um, a positive trend and increase of positive perceptions of our EL programs, um, specifically um, the need for professional learning. We saw a decrease from all of our stakeholders in um, identifying professional learning for English learners as a need due to the concerted efforts in providing professional learning for all of our staff, parents, in the area of designated ELD, and um, as well as integrated ELD, and as well as the Cali efforts around oral language development and academic discourse. Okay, goal three is all students college and career ready. And um, it is very apparent that uh, under perception data, the students, the staff, the parents, all in some cases a 50% increase in mm -hmm. positive perception. The key here, um, and I shared this with the counseling staff because they have a large role in the college and career readiness. When I shared this information, their biggest concern was that it wasn't 100%. And, and more importantly, that the amount of uh, staff, student, and parents that responded was about 50%. So that there was about 50% of the people out there they wanted to hear from. So one of the things that um, they're committed to doing is, uh, in all of the secondary counselors, is creating a calendar of activities that identifies some specific objectives and outcomes and that on a more frequent basis, they actually do the perception surveys immediately, that they do some outcome data immediately. One, so that it can inform their practice, and two, that they feel a higher confidence that they're actually hearing from everybody about how they really feel and what they actually know and are able to do. So that's, uh, that's one of their key objectives. Good evening. Uh, goal four is stakeholder input on parent and student engagement, leadership, and positive perceptions of the Zeus Unified School District. And as you can see, and has been the case for uh, most of the other uh, data that we've looked at, there have been some you know, real significant gains. The two that jump out to me on here are students feeling safe at school, number one, and two, uh, students feeling connected. And I want to start with students feeling safe at school and remind the board and the, everyone here that feeling safe at school isn't necessarily, you know, indicative of what's going on at that particular school. There are things happening in the community and in the country and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And all of that informs how kids are feeling at school. And in my conversations with students about safety at school, we didn't really talk about their school. We talked about things that were happening. And, but that's in students' heads. It's, they, they think about it. It's in their parents' minds you know, when they send their kids to school. So you know, we, we, we do have things in place <coughs> excuse me, um, at our schools, you know, the Alice training and different things like that. And we're rolling out those, those different sorts of um, programs to help teachers, you know, know better what to do if there were some sort of a crisis. Um, the other thing that I wanted to speak to is the connectedness. And I think it's interesting that 86% of the parents felt that their students were engaged and connected at school, but only 70% of the students felt that. And seven out of 10 isn't bad, but we need to remember that there are 30% of students who aren't, for whatever reason, feeling connected at their school. And so we need to do a better job of finding out, you know, why that is and, you know, what we can do to improve that. And so goal five is uh, around our learning environment and school climates. And, you know, a, a couple of, of 
areas that we saw um, significant growth was, you know, just in, in the repair, repair, maintenance, and timeliness. We know that we've been focusing in that area in our, um, our uh, maintenance and operations transportation department, and we did see a decrease in the amount of dissatisfied or non-agreement with that. Um, and also, uh, an interesting, similar to what Gary mentioned, an interesting difference between parents and students, uh, parents and staff and students when we look at clean and maintained facilities. And so one of the things I think as we look at this data that, that we can dive into deeper and, and try to uncover more about and address is, you know, what, what is the diff why are the student perceptions different than the staff and the parents with regard to um, clean and maintain facilities. What are they seeing? What are they describing? And again, this is where we dig in with our students, figure out what's going on, and that will help inform um, any changes and improvements. So um, this is a very general look at, at some of the key results. And of course, as I said, this, this is a public document with much more detailed description of every single question and all of the populations that we surveyed. Um, but if at any time anybody would like to sit down, go through it, uh, whether a board member wants to come through and understand things a little bit better and understand uh, what happens with these results, I'm happy to do that. Also with anybody in the public that wants to make sure they understand because this, this big booklet is really about our transparency and about showing that we're not just asking you to say, okay, check off, we did a survey because we're supposed to. We really want to know, we want that input, we want that feedback because it helps us get better. So, thank you. I want to thank you for the great presentation, and I know I know you all worked very hard, all the whole team, to you know everywhere I went, I'd see you, you know, passing out flyers or in or passing them at different locations and parents, and it, it's really good. Thank you. I see a big difference from last year on the participation. Any other questions or comments? Uh, it's really nice to see how the data shows um, the responses and. Um, I would like to sit down with you just to just because I, I love combing data and just to just for kicks. Yeah, thanks. No, another question. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on, we have the consent calendar. So all items listed on the consent are considered routine and will be taken in one a single motion. Um, so if, unless anybody wishes to pull an item, I will entertain a motion at this point to approve the consent calendar. Motion by Jerry Bibles Vogel, second by Gabriela Arianes to approve the consent calendar. Any discussion? No? Please place your votes. <clears throat> Motion passes 5 0. Moving on, we have Item 12.1, approve attendance at National Alliance on Mental in Illness, NAMI, for Gladstone High School. Is there a motion? motion to approve. Second. Motion by Gabriela Arellanes, second by Yolanda Rodriguez Peña. Any discussion? Please place your votes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have item 13.1, reject all bids for network cabinets. I make a motion to approve 13.1. Second. All right, any discussion? I have a question. Um, since we've rejected these bids in the next item, what, what happens next? The um, uh, project for network cabinets will be included in a project that we expect, a larger project that we expect uh, in the future, probably in about a year. So we'll just and this, this is on advice of our um, E-rate consultant. So we won't be getting network cabinets for a while then? That is correct. What does that mean for the, the, are the needs of the district? Marvin, would you like to address that please? Is 
it actually was part of an E-rate uh, bid we had. When Bob was here, he had put into uh, the project to move uh, four IDS. With our new group, it was decided to keep them in their location, so we had about $35,000, we thought, of E-rate funding we were trying to recoup by putting cabinets in places that we needed them to replace some of the cabinets. It turned out that after our consultant kind of looked through the numbers, it was actually closer to $20,000 of E-rate money we could have used. Um, it would have cost us like sixty dollars to $80,000 of our budget to get the additional cabinets. Within a year, we'll have the, the big E-rate project. At that point, we're going to go back through and redo all of the cabinets that need to be uh, replaced in the district uh, at, you know, at that time. With, that's the large money with E-rate, and that probably will be, I think, within a year of two years. And the cabinets that we need at Slauson would be part of the modernization that we're doing. Okay. So, what, so does that mean back in the modernization? Does that mean in the uh, modernization of, uh, right now, the phase for Slauson, they're going to have to wait two years for their cabinets? No. That oh. Their cabinets will be part of the modernization if we replace any of those. Um, we have cabinets everywhere. It's just that the new switches and equipment is bigger than the old cabinets size. So we we probably will need to go through and take those out and replace them with bigger cabinets. It's we can either like cut the ones that are there and then they become unusable to put a bigger cabinet around it, or we can take the equipment down, move the cabinet, and put the equipment back in, which is a lot more expensive and we use uh, our consultants or or whatever service we use to kind of do that for us. Okay. So I'm going to ask for us to go do a vote now. So there's a motion and a second on the table. Please place your vote. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have item 13.2, reject all bids for phase three fencing improvements at various sites. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Jerry Bubbles Vogel, second by Adrian Greer. Any discussion? Yes, can we have some elaboration on um, why the route was that? Um, is it the same thing? It, is it just the rebates? Um, no, this is different. But we'll have, um, Linda, can you give us an update on this in the Friday packet? All right. Thank you. So that means we... So, so there was an update. What? The, I think they're going to go, I don't know, are, they, are you going out to rebid with this one? Yes. In fact, it says the next item. It's yeah. the next item to go out to rebid. It's already been rebid. Okay. All right. So um, everyone, will everyone please place their votes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have item 13.3, award bid of 181124, phase three fencing improvements at various sites. It's the rebid. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve 13.3. Second. Motion by Yolanda Rodriguez-Pena, second by Gabriela Arianes. Any discussion? Seeing none, please place your votes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have item 13.4, award of bid 181134, underground utility replacement at Paramount Elementary School. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion, motion by Adrian Greer, second by Gabriela Arianes. Any discussion? Please place your votes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have item 13.5, approved notice of completion for United Mechanical Contractors for the HVAC and roofing replacement and new fire alarm installation at Charles Lee Elementary School. Motion Make a motion to approve, approve 13.5. Gabby B. Chu, Yolanda. Gabriela made a motion. Second, Gabriela Arenas made a motion. Seconded by Yolanda Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Please place your votes.
Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have three informational items about board policies. Um, I'm just going to take them all together. Does anybody have any any questions on, item, on the policies in item 14.1? What about 14.2? Um, and then finally, 14.3. No? Okay. All right, with that, um, we are gonna, we are going to close. We're not adjourning. We're closing this. Um, yeah. Can we um, say a few closing things since we're going to go ahead and um, dedicate this? Yeah, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Before we close. Yeah. Ahead, um, yeah. I do want to give out <clears throat> my condolences to to the parents and the grandparents and Haley's uncle, I, uh, it, it's when we lose a student um, to whatever it is in a school district, we, t we take a big hit, we take a loss. And therefore, I, I am very sorry and I really appreciate how we're going to dedicate this uh, meeting to, to her and remember her and her light spirit. And thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Um, I, I really appreciate your words. Um, so we'll, we will close this meeting in honor of Haley Reyes. Um, and we are not adjourning. We have to. We're actually going into closed session to do one more item, and that's superintendent evaluation. Um, and I just want to make a quick statement about that. So we're 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 meeting um, because we have two new board members. We our evaluation cycle normally happens in the fall, so October, November. Um, but because we have two board members, we want to make sure that they're included. They they are brought up to speed on where we are in terms of, of the goals for the, the internal goals for the, the superintendent, so that. We'll be prepared when we have our strategic planning process in June. In June. Um, so that is why we're meeting tonight. So, we'll, so with that, we will close closed session and open session, and then go into closed session. <laughs>